Good morning, Stampers. I'm just gonna give it a minute for everybody to log in and get my screen ready so that I can see your comments. Be sure to say hi when you pop in, whether you're watching live or the replay. It's always nice to see who watches. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Okay, so we've got another Friday. Welcome. I hope you've got lots of exciting plans for the weekend. Um, okay, we've got lots to cover here. First of all, just like always, well, let me introduce myself. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Shore Park, Alberta, Canada. And every Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, um, I go live with a different crafting project. And you always have the opportunity to win the projects that I did the previous week. So last week, I created using the sweet cups. Good morning, Christine. I did this cute little baby ornament. Good morning, Mary Liz. And a little Easter treat. So you have the opportunity to win those and how you can do that. Um, well, somebody from last week had the opportunity to win those. So by commenting on the post, um, whether it's live or the replay, uh, sharing the post, you get five entries. I put everybody's name in a, in a little dish and I draw. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now I just want to note, point out that, good morning, Barb, um, that you will get the pieces from last week. So everything is done. You just have to add in, good morning, Peggy. You just have to add in a sweet cup. But the other thing that you can do is if you don't have the sweet cups, you can actually just make this just a regular tag without the sweet cup lid. Um, and same with this, if you don't have the actual sweet cup, you can actually just put together your own little basket and use this as a little tag, okay? So I did want to point that out just because it would be very difficult to mail one of those sweet cups and have them arrive in one shape, in one, in good, good shape. So I've got everybody's name in here. Thank you all for commenting and sharing last week's video. And the winner is Beth. So I will pop that in the mail for you, Beth. Okay, let's move these out of the way. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to flip you down so that we can go ahead and get started because we've got lots of stuff to talk about today. All right, just bear with me for a second. Good morning, Kim. Okay, and there's always a bit of, of a delay, so I want to see what you guys can see. Try to make it so that we're somewhat straight. Oh. Oh, that's better. Okay. All right. Good morning, Amy. Okay, so we are nearing the end of March, so I wanted to point out a couple things. First of all, the celebration coordination. Um, there are a few items that are sold out. So we've got the lily framelits, the cupcake framelits, and the hop around framelits. So those are all gone, unfortunately. Um, but you can still get the stamp set, the story label punch, good morning, Tammy, and the four seasons framelits. And this one, I'm so excited that this is still available. Um, and that one coordinates with the Painted Seasons Bundle. So this paper and this stamp set, which we are going to use today because I can only use it until the end of March and I absolutely love it. So I wanna get as much use out of it as I can. Uh, and the, the emb gorgeous embossing folder, which we used two weeks ago, that is still available, which is great. There's a stamp set. And then there is, all of these stamp sets are still available. Unfortunately, the ribbon, the butterfly elements and the grapefruit grove foil is sold out this DSP is still available these two items are still available but that kit is sold out okay so as we near the end you know you'll find that a few more things might sell out as well and then from the third release all of these products as far as I know as of yesterday they are all still available turn on my light to see if that's a little bit better here um, and I'm so excited that this painted season is um, DSP is available uh, on its own so in case you don't want to get the bundle um, you can purchase that on its own. 
and you will see next week I will be releasing a scrapbook class so if you are a scrapbooker you definitely want to check it out I think it's going to release if all goes well I'm going to release it on Tuesday um, and we will be doing scrapbook pages using that bundle so we will be using the DSP the coordinating stamp set and the coordinating framelits as well as some alphabet sets in there so good morning Shirley so you definitely want to keep an eye out for that if you are a scrapbooker. I'm excited about those upcoming pages. Okay, so we'll move that out of the way. Now today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I think I've done one other Facebook Live where I started with a sketch, and I love sketches. I actually love them so much that I've got a class that I'm releasing, I'm hoping April 1st, that's the intention, um, and it's all focused on sketches. Different ways to use them, how to use them, how to convert them from um, card making sketches to scrapbook sketches to traveler's notebook sketches just a ton a ton of information and it will not be product based so it we won't be using I won't be focusing on a specific product per se um, we will be focusing more on the process and using what you have so you can participate in this class it will be primarily scrapbooking but there will be a few cards thrown in there as well um, and any of the tips that I give on how to use sketches can definitely be interpreted for cards as well. Okay, so you can watch for that, but I really want to encourage you to use what you have on hand and not necessarily have to purchase additional product, okay? So it's a little bit of a different class than what I normally offer, but I'm excited. So anyways, today I saw this sketch online and it is from Pamela Young and she did have a website, but I clicked through and her website, she no longer has it. So there, I, I, I can't refer you to anyone um, or any particular website. But anyways, I really liked this portion of the sketch. Um, so I wanted to use this and convert it into a card, okay? So keep that in mind. Actually, let's pull out the card. Okay, so this is how I converted it. So I really took this center bit and really went with it, replicated it here, and then I used this bit and added my greeting here, and then there's this up here where I added a bow. So we are gonna do a version of this card. It's gonna be the same layout. I'm just switching up the colors because I was kind of playing around yesterday and I realized that I needed to do to make it a little bit of a bigger card because of the size of rectangles that I did. So this card is actually six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So it's a little bit bigger. And of course we don't have envelopes for that. So I couldn't find in all of my stash, including my retired stuff, I could not find a piece of real red DSP to make an envelope. I can't believe it. It's crazy. So um, I'll have to figure out a different solution. Maybe I'll just use a piece of Whisper White cardstock or I don't know. We'll see. I'll figure out something. I couldn't find any solid pieces of daffodil or pumpkin pie either. So those are obviously colors that I use quite often. So the first thing that I did was I went to my DSP because I knew I would have to make an envelope to match. And this is my inspiration. So this is going to make the envelope. So I pulled the colors from this and we're gonna recreate this card using colors from this DSP. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. Move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay. So first up, we've got our card base. So like I said, this is a little bit of a bigger card. So it measures eight and a half inches by six and a quarter inches, and it's scored at four and a quarter, okay? Now, if you remember, in the holiday catalog, we had some memories and more cards and envelopes. You could also, if you have these left, these were from the Santa's workshop, Sweet. if you have these left, you could definitely use this as your card base as well because this is Poppy Parade. This is Poppy Parade as well, and that's the color of red that is in here. Okay, so if you're recreating these card, this card and you have this left over, you can definitely use that. I chose to go with a just solid cardstock just because I figured not everybody would have um, those left over, and plus I wanted to make an envelope that coordinated with it. Okay, so we've got this my bone folder here we're gonna fold it in half so that's our card base we'll just set that there for a minute 
And then I have two pieces of Whisper White cardstock, and they both measure three and a half inches by five and a half inches. Actually, I shouldn't say they both measure that. This measures just a titch smaller. Um, just because this is going to piece, be the piece that we sponge and this is going to go over top. Okay, so and I just cut it just a little bit smaller just so that it wouldn't stick out on the sides. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've pre-cut two of the rectangles and I'll do the third one here. So in my rectangles, my stitch rectangles, we are using in this collection here, we're using the second smallest one. Okay. And I'll pull in the big shot. And my pads are so, so bad. They definitely need to be replaced. I just ordered a replacement set. I can't believe I didn't have a set on hand. Okay, and like I've said before, if you've watched my videos, these stitched rectangles, you don't want them to go in parallel to the big shot. You want them to go with a corner going in first. So what I did, I, I centered it from side to side and gave about a quarter of an inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And then this middle one will just be centered between these other two. this out you'll end up with a few of these but these are great for stamping greetings so you can use those on a different project okay so now what we're gonna do is we're going to place this this piece over top and we're just going to do a light pencil line okay so that's going to be a guideline on where we want our colors to stop. Okay, so we need some scrap paper here. Okay, so we've got a couple pieces of scrap paper and I am going to start with the lightest color. So my colors, again, I chose them right from that DSP. I'm using Petal Pink, Grapefruit Grove, and Poppy Parade. So I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna start with the lightest color, so that's petal pink. I'm going to put my scrap paper just below that pencil line. And I'm gonna use my sponge. And when I sponge, I always start off of the cardstock and then rub onto the cardstock. And that just avoids kind of any harsh lines. And I like to go in a circular motion as well. I'm not a real pink person, but I sure like this petal pink color. I use it a lot. Okay, so we've got the first color. And then I'm gonna move on to the middle color, which is Grapefruit Grove. So I'm gonna move it down and again, just below that pencil line and take my darker sponge. And you can make these as dark as you want and you can do them in any color as well. So then I'm just gonna be careful as I get close to that line, I don't necessarily have to go right up to the line. You can go as close as you want. You can overlap it a little bit, but remember there's that little bit of a border in there. So you do have a little bit of leeway. Those colors actually don't look too different. Try to make this one a little bit darker. Okay, and then we're gonna repeat that with the darkest color, which is the Poppy Parade. And 
I will just do this so that I have something to hold on to. And then I can just sponge the rest of the, the card. I was using this with Real Red yesterday, so I'm hoping that we'll still get the Poppy Parade color. What a difference the colors make, hey? The more vibrant the color, the easier it goes on. All right, look at that. That looks pretty even just like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I want to stamp the image. So on the sample, where's my sample here? I used the succulent, but because I'm using that patterned DSP with the flowers on it, for this particular one, I'm going to use the flower so that it all ties in together. So I'm gonna start with petal pink, and I'm just gonna stamp a couple just on the petal pink. I will go to the Grapefruit Grove. And stamp one of these. I'm just gonna stamp it right in the middle. And then I'll go to the Poppy Parade and do the same thing. Good morning, Andrew. Are you not working today or are you on your way to work? Okay, and then a couple Poppy Parade ones here. Okay, and I just love how this stamp looks, like stamped and even on the sponged background. Oh, it's just so pretty. I can't get enough of this stamp set. Okay, so let's move this stuff out of the way. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this over top so I am going to use mini dimensionals, which I have here somewhere. And I probably should have had one of these done. This takes a little while on your way to work. Well, I hope you have a great day today. Okay. So now we're gonna stick this on here. That will cover over those separate lines that separate. Kind of reminds me of a paint swatch, especially with the white separations in there. Okay. Does anybody have plans to craft this weekend? Or hope to craft? You can always hope, right? Doesn't always work out, but okay. Then you want to stick this on here and just as long as it doesn't uh, you don't see any of the card stock sticking out any of the sides all right there we go and then we are going to put this onto our card base so that's going to go on like that oh amy's crafting as as she's watching Kim is working on her swaps. Are you going to on stage, Kim? Mary Liz, hopefully Saturday evening movie and crafting paper pumpkin. Yes, I haven't done this month's paper pumpkin kit yet either. I loved the bonus stamp set in this month's paper pumpkin kit. Love that number set. Okay, so now, no, you're not going to on stage? So what are you, do you, are you just participating in a swap with other demonstrators? Well, I'm assuming it's other demonstrators. Okay, so now we need a greeting. And now for this, let's pull back this DSP. Okay, so for this one, I did daffodil pumpkin and real red. So then I added black as my accent. So for here, because I pulled the colors right from here, um, I thought we could do, well, we could still do black, but we could also do the Call Me Clover, which is the green and the leaf, or we could do Early Espresso, which is the brown in the center of the flower. So what do you guys think? I know there's a little bit of a delay, so. 
Oh, with Brenda. Okay, yeah. All right, so what do you guys think? Early espresso, clover, or black? The only thing is, call me clover. I've got some call me clover ribbon that we could put up here. I don't have anything early espresso to put up there. So I'd have to figure out something else to do for that. Espresso, green. We've got one green, one espresso. <laughs> I think the black is out. Oh, Amy wishes she was going to on stage. Yes. Early espresso, says Kim. Okay. All right, so what we will do is I am going to use the greeting. I'm still gonna do the same greeting, so I'm gonna use the word thanks, and this is from the well-written framelits. Uh, Christine says early espresso. Okay, early espresso it is. We've got more votes for early espresso. Um, so well-written framelits. Love, love, love this set. And I have the word thanks in here somewhere. I think. Oh, here it is. Okay. So then I'm going to use a piece of my multi-purpose adhesive sheets. Peel that back. Let's make sure there's nothing on the other side. Stick that on there. Give it a nice rub to make sure it's really stuck. And then the key with these is you want to remember to flip it over and it's going to go the big, through the big shot like this. Pop this out. There's my. Okay, and now I don't have to worry about fussing with any glue. I can just peel off the backing because I basically just converted this into a little sticker. on there oh yeah I like the brown okay so I am gonna pull out my twine and see because I know at one time we carried early espresso and white baker's twine oh and I might have some left let's see oh no that's black okay there's nothing in there Okay, I've got another idea then. We will, I'm gonna pull up my white. And then, I'm going to use a little scrap of this. And I'm gonna cut about five eighths of an inch thick. And I'm gonna create a little, like a little banner. Yeah, I could do burlap as well. You're right, Mary Liz, where are my scissors? I'm gonna do, I don't know, maybe about an inch long. I'm gonna flag it. Here like this and then with just with a whisper white bow that's gonna be my solution so that I can tie that brown in up there like that and I'll just tie a bow with the white I could even leave it like that I don't even need to put oh I have an idea I don't know if these are the right color but we have these things. 
This is what live crafting gets you, especially when I don't have the card design. I think that is great for Grove. So I could feed the twine through and put that on there. That would be pretty. Okay, let's see. Oh, I need to get my flosser. Okay. Thanks, Marge. You're thinking of getting this well said bundle? I love this bundle. And you know what? Because because it's such a pricey bundle, um, I'm thinking it will carry. I mean, no, don't quote me on this. Don't hold me to this. I don't know anything more than what you guys know. But I would think that it would carry over to the new catalog. I would hope so. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, these are, I've had two kids go through braces. These are um, flosser, floss threaders that you usually use when you, get, when you have braces so that you can floss your teeth. Um, and they work perfectly for feeding uh, twine through buttons or any kind of skinny little holes. Okay, so now I'm just tying a bow. like this and then I'll use a mini glue dot to stick it on okay the little needle threaders Oh, Mary Liz says the needle threaders work well too. You just have to be a little bit on the gentle side. Okay, so now we'll stick that up there and that ties that little, that grapefruit grove color in to the whole card as well. There, that turned out okay. Oh, let's do the inside and then we'll make our envelope. Okay, so for the inside, I am going to stamp a couple flowers. So let's do, since this is inked in Poppy Parade, we will do Poppy Parade first. And then, uh, my cleaner. And then we'll do Petal Pink. do one in Grapefruit Grove up at the top. My Grapefruit Grove and the Petal Pink look very similar. Okay, and then I've got the words that say thoughtful, kind, generous, that's you. And because I used early espresso, I'm going to use early espresso ink for the green on the inside. Pretty. Okay, so now we can stick that on the inside of our card. Just like that. The other thing that I thought was you could add you could tuck you could tuck that underneath what do you guys think is that too much on that side I have to be one of the office birthday cards I have to make so cute <laughs> thanks Mary Liz so what do you think with the flower and the leaf or no or we could put this yeah no I think that needs to go there 
Oh, it could go there. You guys let me know what you think. I'll decide after. We're just going to make the envelope while you guys are commenting. So with, let me know, with the flower or without? Okay. So now, for this, I was looking yesterday because I was going to make um, an envelope to go with the other one, hoping to find some paper. And so my card size, remember, is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. There isn't a four and a quarter by six and a quarter inch um, card size on here. So the next one up that I thought would work is the, there's four and a quarter by five and a half. Oh no, hang on. There is four and a half by six and a half. This A6 size, that's the one that we're gonna use. So our paper size measures eight and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. So we need to cut that down first. So I'll pull in my paper cutter. That's just two ticks before nine, if you're not one for measuring. And then I'll rotate it and do the same thing. If you didn't want to stamp on the inside, you could, to tie it into the envelope, you could do a strip of this DSP in there too, and that would be really pretty. Okay, so now we've got our base cut for our envelope. So now the next thing you do when you make an envelope is you decide which pattern you want up, and I want the floral pattern up. So that is gonna be the, it's, it's going to be face up, and that's because you're gonna put grooves, or you're gonna break the fibers on the top, it will make it easier to fold in, okay? So now we go back to our four and a half by six and a half, and our score line is three and three quarters. So I'm gonna to go to three and three quarters. Now this is different than a regular ruler. Normally you start on the left and you measure up, but this, it starts in the center and measures to the left. So three and three quarters. And I'm going to score and punch. And now the key when you're doing an envelope is you only measure once, you don't look at that ruler again. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that score line as my guide and I'm going to measure it or line it up with this little notch here. So this little nubby thing that's sticking out and this score line is hard to see on this DSB. And I'll rotate it again, line it up with that score line, score, punch. Score, punch. And then I always like to round the corners. And so if you put the paper in from the back, you have a corner rounder. So I'm gonna round all four of those corners before I assemble my envelope. All right, so we can move that out of the way. Thanks for sharing, Beth. Now I'm gonna fold along the score lines. And when I fold DSP, I fold it, I still use my bone folder, but I don't push quite as hard, just because you don't wanna break the fibers too much. You'll get cracking and you'll be able to see white. in those two flaps and put my adhesive on them. Look how pretty that envelope is. Oh, I love it. So nice. Okay, so what did we decide on the flower? I think I only had two people voted. One without and one with. I'm not sure. Let's see.
you know what, we'll stick it on. I have one without, so we'll stick this one on. Okay, so we will add a little bit of adhesive here. Just like that. And then we'll put a little bit on here and tuck this underneath. Just like that. So there we go, look at that, we've got Beautiful card. I don't even know if this is Poppy Parade. It could be real red for all I know, but that's okay. It's close enough. Um, so now we've got this beautiful card with an even more beautiful envelope to put it in. All right, and let's go back. And this was our starting point was this scrapbook sketch. So you can see a lot of similar elements here. So here, I guess this is even closer because we've added in an embellishment on here. Instead of a heart, we use the flower. And then we've got the greeting along that strip. We've got this bit up here, and then we've got the three panels down the side. Super cute, hey? Uh, Mary Liz asks, could you make this a vertical envelope to match the card? Yes, you could definitely do that. So you would just put these two flaps down first and then this one, and then it would open and slide in this way. You could definitely do that. You're welcome, Christine. All right, so that's all I've got for you today. Um, I hope that you guys had a, have a fabulous weekend. And like I said, watch for this Painted Season scrapbook class that will be released on Tuesday. And just remember that it is almost the end of celebration. So you wanna make sure that you've got every, all of those celebration items that you wanted. Make sure that you've got all of those. And if you've been thinking about becoming a demonstrator, now is the best time. During celebration is always the best time. It's always the best deal in the catalog and even more so during celebration. And I'd love to have you join my team. All right, so thanks so much for watching and have a great weekend. Bye guys.